I am Abhishek Sharma, working as an assistant professor in plant biotechnology department in Biani group of colleges. Today I am here to discuss one of the major topic of plant biotechnology subject. This, uh, this topic is known as plant tissue culture. What is plant tissue culture? Uh, it is a culture of any plant part which is known as explant in the in vitro artificial condition inside a laboratory on an artificial nutritional media. The plant tissue culture started in year 1888 uh, when a German scientist Gottlieb Haveland started working on the cells of some plants to grow them inside the in vitro environment uh, with a limited light condition as well as limited chemical as in nutrient media conditions. Uh, he started his work in 1888 and carried out till 1902 and find out that some of the plant cells are able to synthesize the starch under in vitro condition that is inside the laboratory condition and he explained a term totipotency that is the ability of any cell to generate a whole plant. From this concept the concept of plant tissue culture came into the concept of plant biotechnology and now we studied all these scenario in the subject plant tissue culture. Totipotency. What is totipotency? Totipotency is the property of any living cell or organism to make a complete organ or a complete organism. When we talk about the plant tissue culture, we talk about the totipotency of the plant cells. In plant tissue culture, the cells those are used to generate any tissue, organ or whole plant are termed as the X plant. So each and every cell in plant tissue culture has an, the totipotency effect so that they can, they have the ability to generate a whole plant. So by utilizing this property of these plant cells, we used to do the plant tissue culture inside the laboratory for the benefit of the mankind of some purposes. I will tell you what are these purposes. Before that I would like to introduce that how plants grow inside the natural environment. We have seeds from seeds when it germinates it produces the radical portion and the plumule portion. Radical portion leads to the germination or the production of the roots whereas the plumule generates the internodes, nodes, leaf and the shoot apical meristem. These portions have total totipotency in an individual part. Any of the uh, any of these individual part can be used as an explant to grow inside the in vitro condition as an plant tissue culture. Totipotency, the nature of a single cell or an tissue or an organ. So by utilizing the totipotency nature of a single cell or an organ, we use the any plant part for the benefit of the human resources. For this, what we do, we take any of the plant part as a small uh, organ in our tissue form that is termed as explant on an, an artificially derived nutritional media. This media is composed of all the nutritional required that a plant needs to grow inside an in vitro or an artificial environment like sucrose as a carbon source, magnesium, calcium, phosphates and mannitol etc. for its normal growth and photosynthesis. Uh, after taking the X plant from the part, we grow it on a specified or uh, identified artificial nutrient media and allow to grow it according to the need of the experiment. In this case, I have shown a experiment where we are deriving direct shoot organogenesis inside any X plant. So for in this case, this media is very specific for the shoot induction from the X plant that contains the cytokinin hormones that are used to produce the shoot inside the plants naturally. This media contains the artificial cytokinin so the X plant can be induced to generate the shoots. 
when we inoculate the explant on the neutron media and when we it allow it to grow, after a few days there is a chemical induction inside the explant and it gen regenerates the shoot buds. These shoot buds when further allowed to grow, they become slightly elongated and when they are transferred to a separate media that is uh, consisted of auxins, the hormones very specific for the root inductions, they produces roots inside the in vitro environment. When allowed to grow furthermore, these both components become slightly more elongated and makes a an mature plant. This mature plant can be transferred into the normal soil or the normal field environments. This process is called the hardening. Now the question arises why we do all this plant tissue culture practices. There is a, some pros and cons related to this con uh, plant tissue culture conditions like when we talk about the plants those are infected with uh, viruses and diseases. There is no other method to produce a normal plant from a plant infected with virus and bacteria. If there is a uh, infection of virus or any other fungus or bacteria inside the plant then it migrates into the seed of that particular plant. So when we grow the seed of this kind of plant, they will generate the progeny having the same contamination. So if this kind of contamination can arise inside some important plant or the crops of our benefit, then it, be, it will become a big tragedy to the humankind. So in this case, if any this kind of plant can get infected or the seed get infected, we can use the plant tissue culture approach to eliminate these viruses or to generate the virus free plants from the plant tissue culture technique. Second is that there are several plant species those are getting extinct day by day. This particular technique is so much rapid that we can generate thousands of plant within the duration of one month from a single explant or we can say a single normal one plant. So it is one of the most important measure to save the endangered species of plants. Third is that the genetic engineering approaches nowadays are utilizing for the improvement of the quality and the quantity of the nutrition media inside the crops like cereals and the grains. For this the plant tissue culture technique is utilized to treat the chloroplast or the other genomic DNA of these molecules to enhance their nutritional properties. As we say that plant tissue culture is a technique, each technique has some stages or the portions to be carried out. So in 1974, one of the most uh, important discovery made by the scientist Murashige discovered that the plant tissue culture has the four major stages. The first stage includes the selection of the mother plant from which we take the explant. Second is the sterilization of the explant. As we know that the plant grows inside the natural environment and that contains several viruses, fungus, bacteria and their spores etc as an contaminant agents. For this consideration if we will take the explant directly from the natural environment and then grow it on the nutritional media that contains the carbon source in the form of sucrose and other components they will start utilizing the carbon source from the glucose sucrose and glucose. If you will take the explant directly from the environment from that environment they contain the fungus virus bacteria and their spores as in contaminant agents for consideration if we'll grow that explant directly on the nutritional media that contains sucrose and other carbon source as in nutritional with the nutritional value the bacteria or the fungus will start utilizing that particular carbon source and will contaminate the 
nutritional media that will not be available then for the eggs plant for their natural growth. So to eliminate these fungus, virus and bacteria, first of all we do the surface sterilization of the eggs plant for their removal. This, in, uh, this includes the washing of the eggs plant with normal tap water followed by washing with detergent and alcohol followed by washing with autoclaved double distilled water and final treatment of 0.01% HgCl2 or 0.05% sodium hypochlorite. From this surface sterilization, the contaminants of the expands removed totally. And now the uh, expand is in condition to be directly transformed on the nutritional media. So the second stage consisted of the inoculation of the expand on the direct nutritional media. Uh, as I told you earlier, this nutritional media contains several chemicals required for the growth of the plant as well as sucrose as carbon source for the growth of X plant as well as the cytokinin and the auxins according to the requirement of the experiment. The second stage also contains the uh, induction of the shoots from the X plant in case we have added the cytokinins inside the artificial media. After the inductions of shoot, the third stage arrives when the root induction takes place from the X plant from where already the shoot induction has taken place. After the third portion or the third stage when we got a mature plant having the elongated shoots and the roots, the stage 4 arrives where we can take these mature plants from the in vitro condition directly to the normal field conditions. These four stages are the compulsory part of the plant tissue culture techniques of each and every experiment. So to conclude in last, the plant tissue culture technique can be used with the different expand. This diagram shows the different types of expand like we can use the shoot buds to culture in vitro, under in vitro conditions. The callus cultures can be used, the cell cultures can be used under the in vitro condition to germinate the whole plant as well as the embryos cultures can also be done. These embryos are the somatic embryos, those are derived from the somatic cells of any plant. Seed cultures is also there where the seeds can directly be cultured over the nutritional media to generate the whole plant. Also, the meristematic cell culture is there to generate or we can say to rapidly generate the numbers of plant. Finally, the protoplast cultures and organ cultures also the part of the plant tissue culture. The overall plant tissue culture technique is basically utilized as I told in earlier portion for the benefit of the mankind. They are majorly divided into the four portion. First portion is the conservation of the germplasm or we can say the conservation of the elite germplasm. Here the term germplasm, germplasm refers to the cereals or the grains or the vegetative uh, crop of high nutritional value. From where we can get high nutrition like the rice the good variety of wheat, uh, wheats like golden wheat, golden rice etc. Also for the conservation of the endangered species, there are number of trees, those are beneficiary for the production of the timber, also the drugs can be obtained like the tree of sal that is known as shoria and uh, tree of ashok, saraka indica. So, for the conservation of this type of endangered species, we can use the plant tissue culture. Also, to generate the disease-free plants, as I told you earlier, if the crop is infected by the virus or the fungus or any other diseases, the plant tissue culture technique is the only technique from where we can develop the disease-free plant from its seeds. 
Finally, it can be utilized as an alternative to the conventional breeding in case where the conventional breeding takes more time usually 4 months to 6 months. In that case in plant tissue culture the aim can be achieved within the 1 to 2 months. This whole scenario makes the plant tissue culture technique as one of the best studies in the plant biotechnology for the benefit of the mankind. That is all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe our YouTube channel.